In a rebuilding season, has Jeremy Sohan risen himself to untouchable status? You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Spurs right here on the Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Kins 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you back. Hope everybody's having themselves a great work week. And we're halfway through. What are we talking about today? We're going to be looking at Jeremy Sohan. Popovich has been talking about the team evaluating talent moving forward. And we know Sohan will be around. But is he slowly rising himself to an untouchable status in some sort of trade scenario? And also, what is up with Kendrick Perkins, a former NBA big man, took another shot at your silver and black. Let's going to bring on our guest. He is the one, the only, the man who almost had the, almost won the hosting job for Wheel of Fortune. He is Rudy Campos of Sweep the League. Can you imagine if you were the host of Wheel of Fortune? That'd be awesome. Yeah, I'd be giving away a million dollars like nightly on that show. <laughs> You'd be asking for a cut, right? So you're probably going to let the uh, contestant, one contestant know like, hey, the next phrase is going to be, <laughs> you know, remember the Alamo. And you're like, just happen to get an A, but I deserve a 20% cut of your winnings. It'd be like that game. Remember the, the movie, The Quiz Show, how everybody was in on it at one point? That's no, I haven't seen that movie. Is it any good? Yeah, it's based on it's a true story. Um, an old time of gaming. Uh, no, no, no. It's based oh. off of uh, like a quiz game, uh, an old school quiz game, and uh, the guy that kept winning was just like he knew everything. So uh, basically, it was kind of like a hoax type thing. That man, I got you. I think it's on Netflix, right? Uh, I don't know, man. It's an old movie, so I'm it's not sure. Movie. All kidding aside, so no. Better. Yeah, all kidding aside, no, Rudy Campos is not the ho- the next host or was in the running for the host of Wheel of Fortune. That would have been fun, though. You still watch that show? <laughs> you know, I don't. I, uh, I watch, okay, so I watch it every, literally every now and then, but, um, yeah. it, it's fun to watch. Hey, man, I got to keep the mind fresh. And try to there get you go. Stuff like that. That's it. He is with Sweep the League. Make sure to follow him on Twitter at sweep the league make sure you do that right now um so all kidding aside rudy the spurs season is winding down little by little yes the pain is almost over everybody and uh one thing that we've noticed throughout the season whether it be pre-game or post-game is some phrases that popovich uses and one phrase that he uses quite often is that the team is looking at players that who might stick around for next season He said that once, twice, many times this year. And we know that maybe, you know, before like those French player, like your Dominic Barlow's, uh, you know, maybe some GD guys they call up. But nevertheless, one guy who factors to be in the Spurs long term plans right now is Jeremy Sohan. Rookie is playing really well. But as the season goes on, Rudy, he tends to show different sides of his game defensively, offensively, you know, the one handed free throw. He's turning out not to be a bad pick at number nine. And we don't know what the ceiling is yet. So we can only project. We only have a rookie year sample size. But based on what you're seeing, Rudy, are you there yet to say that Sohan is near untouchable status, you know, in trades? I would say going into next season, yes. Uh, he's pretty much untouchable right now. I mean, for me, you know, well, from every time I've talked to you, it's the fact that everybody's touched. Everybody can can be moved. I mean, there's no untouchable on any team. I mean, if you have the right offer on the table and it's an offer you've got to take, you do it. Mm-hmm. But as far as Sohan goes, I mean, going into next season, he's definitely untouchable. He's definitely going to be a starter. His stats have, you know, improved every single month. And that is the key factor when you're trying to develop team as well as individual players how are they doing over on the season right. compared to former spurs uh stats in fact one spur in particular his are pretty much the same and on par I'm not saying he will be this guy and i'll get into mm-hmm. him in a little bit here but just to say that his improvement is showing a lot for the san antonio spurs and as of right now he is very untouchable yeah for me he's rising up there I still don't know if he's untouchable yet. Uh, you know, we know that he's just a rookie. There's a lot of room for improvement, namely, you know, his mm-hmm. shot. But 
I, I think it'll be a very if they do flip them, it'll be a very Dejounte Murray like trade, Derek White like trade. It'll have to be a, the right price tag, the right player moving forward. But let me ask you. In any, let's just say that um, if the Hawks would have used them just because you know, the Murray trade. They say, oh, you know, we want another piece of the Spurs. And they say, we want Sohan. At this juncture of the Spurs rebuild season, would you look at the Hawks and say, you know what? We want players now, enough of these draft picks. Give us some of your young talent. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If they were to come out and say, hey, you know, we want, uh, we want Jeremy, we, we got to make a deal done. And if it's the right deal, I mean, we're talking about guys that maybe like if they say, "Hey, here's a John Collins and a DeAndre right. Hunter." Sure. I mean, you're you're foolish if you say no to that kind of deal. I mean, you, you've got to take a deal like that, especially if it's two big pieces that'll help you with the rebuild process right away. You mm-hmm. got to take that deal. So yeah, the untouchable part. Um, I mean, it's kind of a it's kind of a tricky subject. The way basically he's playing, he shows that he's going to be one of the you know, one of the valuable pieces for the San Antonio Spurs moving forward. But again, don't be, don't be dumb. And if the table, if the right deal's on the table, you've got to take it. Especially if, like you said, you're Atlanta and you say, oh, you know yeah. what? We'll, we'll offer you John Collins. We can't work with him, and we'll throw in DeAndre Hunter for Jeremy in a first. You've mm-hmm. got to jump on that right away. Yeah, yeah. Again, look, I'm not there yet. I, I think he's rising up to maybe a very expensive price tag. I think that's where he's at right now. And I think the Spurs also see something in him as well. Uh, you, you saw recently now, I know a lot of team tank people are going to come at me and say, well, it's because of the team tank um, mentality right now. You know, how many, the, you know, the, they ran some of the offensive plays for him in, in mm-hmm. that of those games versus Houston. You know, he, he's taking his shots. They're not telling him not to not take shots. He's chucking them up. So, you know, they're really trying to develop him. He, I don't think he went to Austin, right? For the G League at all. Right. No, at all. He, no, he didn't. Yeah. So they didn't, they, they put Blake Wesley there. I believe they put Malachi there for a quick second, but Sohan did not go there. And that's very telling considering, you know, what they view him as. You know, Vassell was a different situation. That was during the pandemic, uh, you know, but Trey Jones went there. Uh, you know, we know DeJounte Murray went there. Derek White went there. But I mentioned Wesley went there, but Sohan didn't. So I, that's a good sign if the Spurs see something in him. Uh, I was going to ask you though, Rudy. You know, we're talking about Sohan and whether he's untouchable status. But for a number nine pick, are you a little surprised right now what he's doing, or should you not be surprised if you're a fan that he's doing what he's doing on the court? My my biggest thing is I think he's. I think I'm more surprised because I never expected a uh, a little bit of an outburst on the co- on the scoring side. I mean, I, I know for a fact he could have scored the ball at Baylor, but he wasn't much of a scorer. And he's kind of improved on that sense of getting to the basket, uh, making you know field goals more manageable. Of course, his three point shooting is horrendous, but you know what? There's not a lot of rookies that come in and shoot the ball it lights out. It happens, you know, not as often as people think. Yeah. Uh, he's got to develop a jumper, but overall, I think I'm actually more shocked that he's actually playing this well this early mm-hmm. in his career. He was a true developmental type player. He wasn't a player that was going to come in, be a starter or anything like that, in my opinion, coming in for Baylor. But again, in this draft class, there wasn't a whole lot of great, great, great prospects in this one. Um, I mean, he had a few, but Jeremy surprised me at number nine. Very good pick. I mean, it's a value pick. It was a really good pick for the San Antonio Spurs. It made sense because he's a two-way type player now. So I really like what I'm seeing, and I'm kind of shocked. Yes, I am shocked at the way he's playing right now. We're talking with Rudy Campos. He's with Sweep the League. Make sure to follow him on Twitter at Sweep the League. And we're talking about Jeremy Sohan, how he's been looking right now, and if his play has elevated himself to an untouchable or near untouchable status. When we get back, we're going to continue this chat and more. Look at some of the numbers and what some of the numbers that pop out for Rudy, for me, and much more on this episode of Lockdown Spurs. But I want to talk to you about our, well, our sponsor here, the Ultimate Pro Basketball GM. Look, I'm really geeked out by our new partner and sponsor of today's episode, the mobile game Ultimate Pro Basketball GM. You ever dreamed about becoming an NBA GM and managing your basketball franchise? Well, your dream can come true, and this game is definitely for you. Manage every strategic aspect of your team. Play through the season and lead your team to glory. You're responsible for hiring the right coaches and assistants, trading and training players, 
making draft picks, navigating your franchise through free agency and the draft and all the ups and downs of a season. All this in a challenging and realist, realistic game world. Ultimate Pro Basketball GM is completely free and playable offline. Play on the go as you want, when you want to. Look, sometimes me and the Lockdown NBA host, yeah, we get into a little uh, talking trash mode every once in a while throughout the season, and we're having fun with it. And I think getting this app is only going to enhance those back and forth that I have with uh, a lot of the Lockdown NBA hosts, and you'll have too with your friends. And uh, yeah, it get it right now. So Lockdown Spurs listeners can get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using promo code Locked On in the game store. So make sure to check it out. To download the game, just visit probasketballgm.com, scan the code, or look it up on the app stores. That's probasketballgm.com. Ultimate Basketball GM, start your dynasty today. Autobots, roll out. We're back right here on Lockdown Spurs with Rudy Copples of Sweep the League on Twitter at Sweep the League. Rudy, I just read an ad for the Ultimate Pro, Pro GM basketball app. I, I, I would hire you as my coach. <laughs> you sure the players could actually, uh, uh, I guess, be there with me of my attitude problem that I have? I go full Bob Knight, man. Oh, I remember, remember, remember him? But I remember those kind of coaches. Remember back in the day, coaches were wild. And- uh, I, I can't use that vulgar language talking about the players on your show, man. But let's just say this the entire <laughs> game of basketball has become soft. So Bob Knight was definitely uh, very, not welcome very on soft. any locker room. Do you think Larry Brown would survive in today's NBA or no? I, I, can't, I don't. No. I see him getting frustrated so easily. I Larry would have quit probably the first one or two minutes of the preseason. <laughs> he would have said after this. <laughs> I know, but anyway, uh, we're talking about Jeremy Sohan and if he's rising to untouchable status or not there yet. Rudy, look at some of the numbers that Sohan has been doing so far through his rookie season. Uh, rebounding, he is fourth on the team right now at 5.1 per game, uh, 10.6 points per game. Uh, not bad. And you, you talked about, uh, you know, the shooting. Well, you know, there it is. You know, not terrible at this juncture of the season, but definitely needs work. 44% from the field, but 24% from the three line. You mentioned this in the first segment, how coming out of Baylor, you know, he wasn't expected at all to be, not say dominating, but contributing, contributing on the offensive end. Why do you think that is? You think that's just simply because now he's more of a focal point versus what he was in Baylor? Like, I did not expect that. Why do you think he took that step in his, just his basketball career? Well, you know, at Baylor, he, he was surrounded by some scorers already. So he really didn't have to ask to do too much while he was at Baylor. Coming into San Antonio Spurs, it's actually, and this is not really a bad thing because I hate when I get, you know, grief and crap from people saying like, oh, you wish this upon. And I, no, I don't say this in that sense. But what the blessing was for Jeremy was when Devin got hurt. The Spurs needed to get another score because Keldon cannot manage to do it by himself. Right. So he inserted himself during that time frame to become the Spurs' second scorer and the second go-to guy. And he took it, you know, the bull by the horns and just decided, you know what, I'm going to do this. Up to scoring average throughout the months. I mean, when you're talking about his rookie season, he started at, what, eight points a game in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Now for this month, and only two games, he's averaging 18 points. But last month, there was 11 points. So his in- average is increasing. And that's what it is. He just took it upon himself to be a scorer. Like I said, the good thing about Jeremy is that he makes his, he makes the offensive side easy for him. He gets to the basket. He makes a little cut that makes it easier for guys like Trey Jones right. to get him the ball underneath the basket in the paint. Uh, his shooting, yeah, he's not going to shoot very well, but it's the way he's getting his points that is very, very impressive. I didn't, like I said, I didn't expect that kind of offensive uh, spurt from him, but I'm glad we're seeing it because it gives them a mm-hmm. third option when Devin and Keldon are healthy. Yeah, defensively, we we know he makes an impact, and you know, I think that's that area of his game is really going to take uh, leaps and bounds, just, just as much as his offensive side. But you know, you're looking at some of the numbers here and. At his position, he's actually in the 90th percentile in field goal offensive rebounding percentage. So, you know, the the percent of rebounds that he gets off the Spurs misses is pretty high at 6.5%. 
So he creates those second chance opportunities for San Antonio. This is via cleaning the glass. Now let's talk about the shooting now. Yeah, there, there you start seeing the drop off. You know, he gets a lot of the points at the rim, obviously 61% of his, of his uh, accuracy is at the rim. But then you look at his three-point shooting, and that's the biggest area where he needs to improve, especially in this NBA era. Not great from the corner three. He shoots about 12%. Not good from just anywhere else outside of the corner three, 32%. Mm -hmm. And then collectively, you know, 26% uh, overall uh, via cleaning the glass. They just break it down, chop it up from 100%. So that's how it breaks down. Um. I think that'll come in time. Are you worried about that aspect of his game? Do you think he will develop a three-point shot or at least something like a la Bruce Bowen? Bruce Bowen was, don't leave him out in the corner because he'll knock it down. Why can't I see that type of accuracy from him, that, that one spot where he'll be free and comfortable with making a shot? Yeah, truly, I'm not worried about it. I mean, it's his rookie season. So, again, yeah. I don't expect him to come in and shoot lights out. Will he develop a jump shot? I know people are going to point to, you know, oh, well, there's no Chip England anymore, so how is he oh, yeah. develop it? Yeah. These guys can develop. You know, Giannis Antetokounmpo did not become a jump shooter overnight. It's taken him time. He's still not a great jump shooter. There's no Chip England out there. So, I mean, a player can develop a jump shot on their own, basically, and get some help mm-hmm. with it. It just takes a lot of work. If Jeremy has the work ethic, he's going to improve every aspect of his game. He seems like he does. He seems like he wants to be a major piece on the Spurs rebuild. Honestly, it seems like he wants to be a major piece in the NBA as well. That's kind of the attitude that I love to see from him. So, yes, he can develop a jump shot. He can develop a three-point shot. It's going to take a little bit of time. You know, people out there that are already writing him off because he can't shoot. There's been a lot of players. I mean, Kawhi Leonard was not a great shooter coming into the league out of San Diego State. Giannis Antetokounmpo was not a great shooter in the United States. And I'm going to give you another example. Markel Fultz completely forgot how to shoot a jump shot. Yep. Completely forgot. Look at him this year. I mean, he's having one of not the best years of his career. He's shooting a really good percentage. So, yes, you can develop a jumper in the NBA. I forget Brian Wright did say that majority of these rookies, um, you know, they're going to get their bulk of their time. They're they're on their time path. They're not going to rush them. And I think that's the plan in this rebuild. But, you know, I would like to see him create his own shot. I think that's an area I would like to see him develop heading into next season. Again, looking at the numbers, you know, 64% of his shots uh, he gets assisted on. So, you know, players find him and they shoot the ball, give him the ball, and he takes it. I'd love to see him create his own shot as he develops. But uh, you put this all together, and the Spurs definitely have themselves a gem, which, again, begs what the question is in these first two seconds is, is this showing that he can be untouchable or is there yet? I'm not there yet, Rudy. I know you're closer to it than I am. I just need mm-hmm. to see more before that happens. Personally, I don't think – I mean, I think a team is going to have to just wow the Spurs a la Atlanta with DeJounte and Boston with Derek for that kind of scenario to happen. But as of right now, he's definitely trending that way. He is trending towards that untouchable status. I also think, too, and get your thoughts on this, it all depends on the draft, too. If you get Wimby, can you imagine Wimby and Sohan together in that uh, front court? I mean, that's that's pretty good. That's really good. Or hell, even just scooting, scooting Sohan is not bad. Your thoughts? You know, I, I, yeah, I, I see what you're saying that you really aren't putting him quite at the intangible position yet. I I'm there in the sense that I give him one more year. I mean, he's the he's actually deserved one more year uh, to be with the San Antonio Spurs, in my opinion, at least. But I mean, if you're pairing him in the draft, and it just depends where they fall in the draft. I mean, if they fall in the top two, it's going to be, you know, great for Spurs fans all around. I mean, they're going to get right. one of the two best players in the game uh, or in the draft, but it's whether they fall in the three because then you get into a real guard heavy type of draft. Uh, there's sure. some big guys out there, but uh, it, it just kind of depends, man. I, I think either way, wherever the Spurs are drafting, it's going to be a player that is going to help them with the rebuild. But if you're if we're going back to one and two, to me, I, I'm still adamant that Scoot Henderson makes the absolute most sense for the San Antonio Spurs. Um, I get it's a big, you know, you need a big man. You, mm-hmm. you have the history with Derrick Robinson and Tim Duncan. Right. But Webby's not Derrick Robinson. He's not Tim Duncan. He's not going to come in and make that difference for you like they did. But Scoot Henderson is a guy that can do that. Get on the floor, run with Keldon, run with Devin, yeah. run with Jeremy. Imagine the easy buckets these guys are going to get 
with Scoot Henderson running the point position, I, I think that's the better fit for the San Antonio Spurs. He is really confused with Sweet the League. When we get back, we're going to dive into another topic. That is Kendrick Perkins and his recent comments about the San Antonio Spurs, Greg Popovich, and load management. Hey, we're midway. Uh, we're actually we're way past the midway point of the NBA season, but it's still the perfect time to download the FanDuel app, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to one thousand bucks. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel sports app. Safe, secure, really easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drained. You can even make. You know, so many other more exclusive bets like two times three. That's two three pointers scored in the first three minutes. Player props, player points, rebounds, assists. It's all there at the FanDuel app. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to 1000 bucks in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with Fanduel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Autobots, roll out. We're back on Locked On Spurs, talking with Rudy Campos of Sweep the League. Everything about your silver and black. By the way, when when is you know when is Rudy Campos going to tell us exactly how he took down the mighty Kang? We need to know how did you defeat him? Not even the Council of Kings could take him down, but you did it. Yeah, yeah. You're you're going to have to wait till King Dynasty. I make a very special <laughs> appearance in that one, so uh, I am the missing piece that is behind everything. So you got to wait till that comes out. I can't give away that ticket yet. By the way, yes, on yesterday's Locked On Spurs, uh, me and Pledger, uh, San Antonio sports star James Pledger, we went off on a tangent towards the end of the show about <laughs> quantum mania. What, what did you think of it? I, I gave it a C plus. I wasn't too overly impressed. Honestly, I think C plus is very, very good uh, rating right. for it. I might have given it right at a C. Uh, uh, I, I mean, yeah. it was good, but it wasn't. It wasn't what I expected going into it. I mean, yeah. it, it had to be a lot better than what I expected, what it was coming into. I mean, there was so much hype behind it. It was just. It was. It there was. Bad. It was a lot of hype for, for that, you know. And Kang wasn't Kangy enough for me. I didn't, get, I didn't get to see enough of him. He briefly towards the end, but even towards the end, he, all I get them doing was just giving orders and looking at the battle. I think everybody's seen it by now. I'm not letting everything out. But anyway. Let's get back on track. I don't want to get back on that tangent as me and Pledger did yesterday on Locked On Spurs. Um, so Kendrick Perkins, former NBA big man, the guy who shoved Tim Duncan from behind during a game that just led Tim Duncan to laugh at him. Yeah, that one. Uh, he's at it again, Rudy. Mm-hmm. He recently uh, took a shot at the Spurs, Popovich, blaming them for creating load management. He said this on a segment on NBA or ESPN or NBA on ESPN uh, show uh, in a nutshell, again, saying that Popovich, the Spurs, you know, for as much as everybody praises them and the culture and the team for what they did. And why isn't anybody blaming them for load management with load management being a big issue for the league? Adam Silver spoke about it during the all-star break you know, players sitting out, fans missing out on seeing their favorite player play because of load management. It's it's definitely a big topic. But do you think the Spurs and Popovich are to blame for load management, Rudy? So the very first game that comes to mind is against Miami when he rested, yep. what, it was Tim, Manu, Tony, Danny Green. Like, he rested his entire starters. and a couple Sent them back guys, to San Antonio. So. Shipped him back to San Antonio, so you guys are now playing. Can I disagree with Perkins? I cannot disagree with Perkins. I mean, that was the first time that we've ever seen, you know, an entire team take the night off, basically. And, hell, if I remember, the Spurs almost got the win that night, too, against mm-hmm. a loaded Miami team. But nonetheless, I don't disagree with Perk. I, I think it started with Pop, and I started with the San Antonio Spurs and the load management thing. Uh, but also, Perk has to understand, the Spurs were fine, what? quarter of a million dollars for that yeah, and yeah, also yeah, stuff. David Stern so, find the hell out of them yeah so i yes it started with the spurs but the trend continued and there's no penalty at all for any team so that's my countersuit is like wait a minute yeah okay the spurs started it but they got penalized 
big time for it. And they kind of, they didn't do it after that again at all. Now, when the other team started doing it now, when I'm saying teams, I'm saying players decided, hey, I need to take this day off and all that stuff and take a few games off. That's when the entire league kind of opened up the gate and said, okay, load management is a thing. And it's kind of like they got doctors' excuses to do it. Well, the doctor mm-hmm. says I have a, a sprained nail, so I've got to sit out sure. these two games. It happens. <laughs> but at the, at the time, I would say Perk is right. It started with the Spurs, but on the other side, they got fined heavily for it. They got in massive trouble. It started when the players decided to be like, okay, I need to sit out this game. That's when load right. management really started. You also factor too, Popovich, at, at least during the peak of the Spurs dynasty with the big three, you know, the, those guys, they played a lot of minutes uh, back in 2020 yeah. uh, before a game versus the Celtics. Popovich addressed the the fact that many thought that he started this and, you know, he's, he said uh, during that game, or I don't remember before or after, but the point is that he never did load management, that he, in his words, he said he never took out a sheet of paper and said, okay, I am going to cross out this guy and this guy's not going to play. And then he reiterated that Manu and Tony, those guys, they played more minutes than anybody during that mm-hmm. year. And so he pretty much scoffed at it that he's to blame for this. But also, to a big deal nowadays is because how rampant it is. I think Popovich did it not as much. You know, it wasn't as use. It wasn't used a lot during Popovich's and the Big Three's run. Now it's like every other day. It's so and so's not playing, and so and so's not playing. Oh, you're gonna watch. You know, I'm making this up. Your your Lakers and Clippers matchup, and oh, Kawhi's out again. I mean, if anybody's to blame for low management, maybe it's Kawhi. He sits <laughs> out. You know, I know how many games. You know, he comes back for one game, then he's out for three games. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, and, and it's so weird because you know Kawhi during his time with the Spurs, you know, especially towards the end, you know, Popovich and the team wanted him to play. They wanted him out there. You know, the infamous. You know, Mono Ginobili uh, chat saying they needed him out there. The team meeting, re- allegedly, Tony Parker saying, well, my injury is worse. You know, why is he out there? So mm-hmm. it feels like sometimes they just want it both ways. But no, I agree. I don't I, 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 I do think maybe the Spurs just made it not I want to say a thing, just a tool in the in the tool yeah. chest. But now it feels like NBA teams are just. You know, using it like it's nothing. Like, sure, LeBron, you want the day off? Okay, take five days off. See, but even yeah. that situation, I would understand if the Lakers were to give LeBron time off because of his age and his usage. That I get, but yeah, I mean, it's just it's, it's weird because people yeah. think they don't deserve a day off. I mean, this yeah. is a job for them. I mean, they this is a job. Everybody, when you go to work, you get time off after so many after a year or something. So, I mean. You're entitled to time off from your job. This is a job. So if they want to take a night off, yeah, I get it. But where I do come where I do come down on it is if you're gonna take a game off, do it at a home game. To me, that yeah. makes more sense. The road games now if you're playing Dallas, obviously four times in Dallas, hey, I get it. You know, you can take one of those off. But if you're playing one team one time on the road, mm-hmm. those are the games where I'm like, you've got to actually play if you're not hurt. But I would mm-hmm. just force them take off the home game more than anything. Yeah, imagine a, a Spurs fan uh, in Toronto that wants to see the rookie sensation Jeremy Sohan, or mm-hmm. you know, the Spurs fan that makes a trip to well, I don't know uh, Boston because they want to see Tatum play, or I mean, or, 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 or I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. The Spurs fan buys an expensive ticket for a game of the AT&T Center to see Jason Tatum play, and he's out. Yeah, because mm-hmm. of load management. Yeah, you get that. But it's an issue, though. You know, you get the uh, league side of things, you know, paying customers or not being able to see their product, a player on the court, and the mm-hmm. team wanting to preserve players and prolong their careers as Popovich did his best with the big three and much, much more. Yeah, it's it's definitely a, an issue that the league is going to address. So we'll see what they have. And look, you know, to the league's credit, they reduced back-to-backs. Remember, well, remember the days of three games and four nights, you know, one game <laughs> off. With day, I mean, remember those days? Uh, I remember that. Longer breaks. I mean, look, the Spurs are on a how long of a break right now? They don't play till Friday. 
So yeah, yeah. So there's efforts there, but all in all, we'll see what the league does. Hey, we're done talking. We want to hear from you. What do you think about Jeremy Sohan? Is he rising to an untouchable status, or you're just not there yet to anoint him as untouchable in any type of trade scenario? And what do you think about Kendrick Perkins and his comments about the Spurs and Popovich and load management? Rudy, you need to brag about Sweep the League. What's going on? Sweep the League comes to you every single week. We drop episodes. We've had some local guys come on the radio, uh, from the radio, come on the show. We've got a lot more guests lined up. Um, it's fun. It's fast. It's great. You know, we talk a lot more life and sports together. So uh, it's a lot of fun. And I, I hate to admit this, but I got some grief because I don't bring up Spurs players from the past in our 50th anniversary celebration that actually averaged double digits and were actually good Spurs players. So I have to give the 60s and 70s guys a little bit of a shout out here. Could you believe that one guy that never gets mentioned Average 23.7 points per game back in the 60s. His name was Bob Verga out of Duke, no. of all places. Yeah. No. Let's go to 70-71 season. Laverne Tart averaged 13 points a game for your silver and black. I'm kind of oh. shocked at some of these names. I'll yeah. just drop uh, I'll drop one more here. Uh, you know, I'm looking at it because I want to get a good one here, but you know, you got guys like Cincy Powell back in 67, <laughs> averaged 19.3 points per game in 20, 228 games for the Spurs. Yeah. Cincy Powell, almost 20 point a game wow. for the San Antonio Spurs. Wow. So, yeah, there's uh, some love for the 60s and 70s guys out there. Ah, that's, that's going way, 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 way back. <laughs> you know, um, did you see uh, Mario Ali? He recently was uh, honored during the 50th celebration. Yeah. The, the, you know, I always viewed him as one of the, like, I loved his play. Is he the, in your opinion, do you think he is the best spur to ever have that fight, that will, that I'm going to get in your face with your t- my teammate or not, and just bring that heat to a team? But I love the passion he brought to the Spurs. 100 percent i I feel like um the spurs don't really look at him or spurs Spurs fans don't look at him the way some guys like you and i look at him and that's in a deeper Mm -hmm. aspect of things if not for him i don't think the spurs win that title that year there was something about his Yeah. yeah there was something about his fight there was something about his locker room ethic his team mentality just Everything that Mario brought to that team is what kind of snowballed into the Spurs having all this success during the Duncan era. Um, it actually made me feel good because he taught him how to be that leader in the locker room. And mm-hmm. I really think that without Mario Alley, that first title would have been really hard to get. And I'm saying they wouldn't have won it, but it would have been really hard to get because there were times the Spurs were down. They were down mm-hmm. and out. And you could see Ellie hit a big shot, get into his teammates, really motivate them. So, yeah, Mario Ellie played a huge part on that first championship team. Make sure to check out Sweep the League and follow Rudy on Twitter at Sweep the League. Hey, we thank you for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen each and every day. Free and available wherever you get podcasts. Second listen, check out Locked On Game to Game. Every recap, every stat, everything you need on Locked On Game to Game available on the Odyssey app, YouTube. And in the other platforms, just like Locked On Spurs. Again, Locked On Spurs is available on YouTube, Odyssey app, iTunes, and even the Ken's 5 Plus app. So for Rudy Campos, I am Jeff Garcia. We're putting on a lock on this episode of Locked On Spurs. Thanks. Thanks.